So the first thing that we're gonna do for soft tracking is add an object. And I'm gonna name this unused trackers. This object is only going to be used to hold the trackers that we're going to reassociate later on with other objects. But we just need a place to hold them for right now, and this is how I like to do this. So I'm going to turn off the head and make that disappear. And I'm going to go to the tracker room, make sure that I have the unused trackers object selected, and holding down the C key, I'm going to create a tracker right here in the middle of my eyebrow. Actually, see that little light colored hair? That's what we're gonna use to track. Uh, I'm gonna turn up the key smooth to about eight. Set a keyframe there. I'm gonna hit the five key right off the bat to keep my tracker centered. Play. I'm going to see how stable my track looks. It's pretty stable. It looks pretty good. So that's great. Let's lock that tracker down. This is what we're going to use to do our deformation tracking. Let's go back into the GOH room and turn the head back on and find a frame where we're kind of straight on. Like frame 135 looks pretty good. What we're going to do now Maybe a better view might be the smudge view. Let's go to lock here. Hit G to turn off the grid. And I'm gonna orbit around. Select our object and orbit here. Dolly in a little, orbit around a little bit more. I want you to be able to see, to pay attention to this section of the geometry as I do what I'm about to do. So I've selected this uh, tracker. Um, I'm gonna hit track, drop onto mesh. And what it does is it draws a line straight out from the camera to that part of the geometry and drops the tracker's seed position right onto the mesh here. So you can see select that again. Let's pan over and orbit so you can see where that got dropped onto the mesh. So that's a very critical step. The next thing that we need to do is turn on the GOH toolbar and hit GOH create. Hold down the shift key and then let go of the shift key to create this object right in the area of where we want our deformation to take place. Now, you see the orientation of the object is not so great, but I can turn on edit pivots and use the control key, get my Z axis to go straight up and down, more or less. I could even adjust the, uh, the direction of the X axis slightly. So let's just take a look at what we've got here. That looks pretty good. It's important to have the orientation line up well, because when we do our solution, it's going to, to calculate along these axes. So if I free up on the x-axis over here, if I unclick that, it's gonna do my calculations for the solution of this object along that axis. Same goes for Z, same goes for Y. We're only going to be solving this on the X and Z. We don't want to be solving along the Y. Let's relock those. Let's go back to frame 35 and unlock them there, which is where we dropped onto mesh. Edit pivots has to be off for this stage. So we've got keyframes at the default position, zero, zero and we've turned off the locks. Oh, <laughs> this is important. <laughs> the tracker, I never assigned the tracker. Remember that the object unused trackers? Well, now it's gonna be a used tracker, so I'm gonna drop that onto this object that we created. Let's rename this object. 
eyebrow left. There we go. In fact, I'm going to rename the tracker eyebrow left. I highly recommend doing this because if you have to open this scene two months from now, you're never going to know what all of this stuff is doing. It gets more and more complicated the more of these GOH tracks that you set up. So I highly recommend documenting your scene internally. Uh, I just also, you see the object here? Um, let's orbit this a little bit. You can see there's like a big bone that extends from this object, the object one, all the way up to the top of the eyebrow. Well, I don't like to see those because it's clutter in the user interface. So I turn off object one and it turns off that bone without turning off the object up here that we want to see. In fact, let's change the color of that to something garish and contrasty with green directly across the color wheel. Okay, orbit around. Oh, let's select that. Orbit around. Now that we have our tracker in there, the object will actually calculate new positions. I'm going to close the GOH panel here. So you see, hey look, our object is actually physically moving because it's been calculated based on the 2D tracker position, its best location in 3D space based on that 2D tracker, solving for X and Z. Let's, now that we're on frame 135, if I go back one frame, you see these lock, these uh, are keyframable again. So I'm gonna set this to reverse and I'm gonna unlock those. And I'm gonna hit play again in reverse and it's going to solve the location for that object for the entire length of time. Now what we want to do is lock the solution for object eyebrow left because we don't want any more calculations to happen on this and I'm going to reset its solve direction to forward and I'm going to turn off the handles, hide handles. Pretty good. Turn that one off too, so we can see. Let's zoom in here and pan down. Okay. Hey, look at that. So that's awesome. Now we're, we're tracking that object just based on one single tracker in 3D space because it's parented to the object head track, which is why we needed that initially. So that's great. Now, here's the next step in the process.